morning uh, to our Easter Sunday service and a, a very special warm welcome to, to those who are perhaps are joining for the first time. Uh, we're glad you're here, we're glad you're, you're listening. Um, this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm struck today as I stand here on Good Friday and the time is just about noon and it is at this time that Jesus was crucified. We read in the Gospel, in Luke's Gospel, that the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two shortly after. Jesus endured the cross. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, whipped and punished to bring our peace and healing. Amen. But the story does not end there, praise God. Today is the day that we celebrate a risen Christ, who was raised again on the third day and is alive forevermore. Romans tells us if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, then we will be saved. I'd like to read from Romans 5, starting at verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our own sufferings, because we, now, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for dying for us while we were still sinners and making a way for us. You died and rose again and today we celebrate the resurrected King and we say, O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? Thank God you have given us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. We will um, now pass over to Peter for the worship. <laughs>
together and join around the Lord's table. We hope you join with us, with your, your families this morning, to celebrate this feast on Easter Sunday. We're, we've got so much to be thankful for today, but it's really important still, even though we're kind of cut off a little bit, that we do take these moments to pause and to ponder and think of Jesus. Scripture says, do this in remembrance of me, and do it often. And it's more so important on this wonderful day that we take this time out, you know, and we, we settle ourselves down, we bring our little ones around us and our loved ones around us, and we partake of these emblems. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this day. This is the day. It doesn't matter what's going on. This is still the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. For all that's going on in our world today, we thank you, God, that we serve the great King, the Lord who is over all, the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord who knows exactly what's going on. But in these moments, a reflection is to 2,000 years ago, when on Easter Friday you allowed your body to be battered and bruised and broken. You allowed your blood to be spilt on the cross. And you died a cruel death because of your great love for us. And we are glad today, Lord, that we have this opportunity to come together and remember just how much you loved us. Even while we were still, still sinners, you died for us. You gave up your life for us. And today we are the recipients of the greatest love of all, but we also know the cost, the cost of the cross, the cost of Calvary. So we come today, Lord, and we don't come sad and blue, but we come with a, a heart full of thankfulness because of what you've done for us, Jesus. The word of God says in John, if you have your Bibles with you today, in John chapter 6 and verse 53, it's a well-known scripture. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Amen. As a living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds in me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture says Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it and blessed it and says, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat ye of it. Let's share this with our families this morning. And let's eat of the bread which represents the body of Jesus. The word of God says, Jesus then took a cup and says, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink ye of it. Again, let's do this together this morning. God bless. Father, again, we thank you for giving us Jesus. Jesus, we are so grateful that you came down from heaven, born into humanity, lived a life full of joy and grace and beauty, then allowed your body to be tortured. You allowed your body to die so that we could live. 
and the church and your people are grateful today. God, for giving us your son. But also, more delightful and glad that Jesus, you now live in us. And because of Jesus in us, we have the hope for today and the hope for tomorrow. So we pray a blessing on each of those who have joined us for church today. Bless the families in our own church especially, Lord. We pray for health and protection, security and safety on each one. May the Holy Spirit fill them with joy. May their cups not be half empty, but may their cups run over. We thank you again for this lovely day. We thank you for this celebration. And Lord, as we go, or we don't go, Lord, today, we stay where we are. We stay home and we stay safe. So may we abide, yeah, Lord, just by those regulations that have been laid down before us. And we pray in that day to come, the church will come together with great joy and celebrating. We commit ourselves, our lives to you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Sunday today, we're missing you. We're glad you're watching in today. It's, of course, it's a special Sunday. It's uh, Easter Sunday. It's Easter Sunday 2020, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. It's the most important day on the church calendar for Christians. We know that Easter is that time when we remember that Jesus died on the cross. Thank God he did. He rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven. The most important and powerful event in, in human history for us is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection, listen to this now, the resurrection has changed and completely turned the world upside down. It is God's incredibly amazing gift in Jesus that has touched the whole wide world. And so Easter clearly shows that death is not the final word. Can you say amen to that? This was not the final farewell, the fond farewell or the last goodbye. Because right here on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus has shown us that he has given us and he has the power to deliver us from death. Hallelujah. And through faith in Jesus Christ, you and I, we can conquer death and we never have to fear it. We don't have to fear death because Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and I am the life. So praise God that he is. But yet, and we have to take this into consideration because many will think this way. Without the truth of the resurrection, then my faith and your faith, the Christian religion, it falls apart. It com comes tumbling down completely. Because what we're doing, if that is the case, we're coming down here Sunday by Sunday or week by week and we're singing to a dead man. Mm -hmm. We're praying to a dead man. We're preaching about a dead man. We're worshipping a dead man. We're trusting in a dead man. You see, if Jesus Christ is dead, everything, everything is changed. And that's why the resurrection or Easter Sunday is absolutely vital. It is crucial because my faith hangs on this absolute truth that he is alive, that he is the resurrected saviour. And so if it wasn't for the resurrection, you see, today I'd still be standing here in my trespasses and sins. And I could not be like him because unless I've been forgiven by Jesus in that, in that sense, then my forgiveness is an impossibility and I'll never ever be like Jesus. The Archbishop of Canterbury described the resurrection this way, and I like this a lot. He described it as a slow-burning explosion that changes individual lives. It changes groups of people, whole societies, the course of history, and the structure of the cosmos. So we're saying this today, and it still excites me to say these words. We're not looking at it from that, that aspect, but we are making a statement, and we are saying as the church and as believers, Jesus is not dead, but Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Every other, and I say this with reverence and respect, every other religious leader is dead and stayed in the grave. No one else but Jesus, the Son of God, is risen, is resurrected. Only Jesus conquered death. And so with Jesus now alive from the grave, you see, everything for you and I is different. We have the offer before us of life. We now have hope before us, presented to us because of the cross and resurrection. We have a purpose and a reason to live. We have a beautiful relationship with God. We now have this channel of communication with God presented and offered to us. We have this wonderful relationship that's being created in our life, which we had no other way or means of doing are opening by ourselves. So hear this, the resurrection is also that one thing, it is, it's that one thing that gives you and I hope today. For if Christ has been raised, as Paul says here, we too shall be raised 
if we trust him. And I hope you trust him today. The Bible makes it clear that without Jesus we are, as Ephesians 2 verse 12 says, without hope and without God in this world. In other words, we are born spiritually dead. And as we go through life, false hope simply makes you and I more desperate because every disappointment is like death to hope. Scripture says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so here's how it plays out and here's how it works out. We go through life feeling like something is missing. We say there must be more to life than this. We are so far at certain times, maybe for some today, we are so far from truly living life to the full as God intended it to be for the church today. And therefore, we are effectively already dead. And some today, sadly, are like dead men walking. You know, we spend our lives trying not to talk about death, but we know it's coming. Now here's the thing, here's the thing, and here's the thing about resurrection, about Easter Sunday. Because it all changes, everything is transformed in this moment of time when Jesus comes alive. When you and I, when you and I come face to face, when we have that full blown encounter with the man that death could not hold, we all of a sudden discover we've got a brand new hope in the way our life is going. The scripture says it this way in Peter's first epistle in chapter 1 and in those three verses and onwards he says, blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Scripture says in here, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him. And watch how it goes on, because we've got to get this little part in here. Then it says, and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with absolute glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen and amen and amen to the word of God. Now, is that true of you and I today? Because if not, it can be. See, here's what I believe, regardless of where we are right now, you can meet Jesus no matter where you are, at any point in time. Sitting at home right now, maybe watching in on this, having a cup of tea in your home, you can encounter the risen Saviour. You can encounter the living God. You can be born again right now because of the hope we have, because of the resurrection. My spiritual death can be swallowed up. Yes, it can. See, understand this, sin does not win, sin will not win, Jesus wins and Jesus triumphs, death does not win, Jesus wins Jesus is always victorious because of the cross I want to say this with, with energy and passion today Jesus really did die for our sin and rise again for our salvation so here's, here's the deal for the church today we are not down at church week in, week out doing a certain thing. Now hear me, hear me. Listen to this. We're not coming down to church week in, week out and singing songs to some dead guy. No way. And we're not praying to a dead man because for you and I, that would be pointless. Or we're not living and serving some dead guy. That would make no sense. But here's the thing. We have come here today. Hey, yeah, but we're just looking in from our homes today. But we're still coming to church. We have come here to this wonderful Easter service. And what are we doing? We are singing. Hey, man. We are worshipping. Some might even have got up and danced in their homes. Some are praising. And some of us, maybe even feed feel the need to shout and we're shouting because we don't worship and serve a dead man but we come here with joy in our hearts and a spring in our steps because we're serving, worshiping, rejoicing in the risen Saviour who is in fact the Saviour of the entire world. Hallelujah. Furthermore, we can confess our sins to him because he is alive. 
You see, I want to say this to you today. Rejoice and be glad that our sins, my sins, are dealt with and we are declared righteous before him. Praise God and thank him for that. Today, we are born again. We have a brand new beginning with the old behind us, the new before us. That's including our guilt and our fears and the shame that we may have carried for years. The word is you are redeemed, you are forgiven, you are set free by the blood of the Lamb today. And because of that, dear ones, uh, we now have a hope for the future that goes beyond the grace. A hope for now that transforms and changes our lives completely. We have a relationship, do we not, with Jesus the scripture says, hey, we can know and love him even though we don't see him with our eyes. And I want to come back to the story now because that's what Mary really learned on that first Easter Sunday morning. Look at the story. If you get Bibles with you, just check it out here. On Easter Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb to do what had yet to be done. And that is to care for the precious body of Jesus. Now we know the story. We've heard it since we were children. When she arrived, she discovered this large stone, which was meant to be in front of the tomb, had been moved and had been rolled away and the grave lay bare and open. She popped her head, she looked inside and she was startled and at the same time horrified to see that his body is gone. She immediately thinks someone has broken into the grave, someone has taken, they have stolen the body of Jesus. I mean, how could they do all these things to our Lord? How could they do all these things to our Savior, whom we love today? Not only have they crucified him on Friday, now they've come back and they've taken his body away. How can these people be so merciless? Hallelujah. But then Mary hears a noise. And she turns round and sees a person she believes to be the gardener. Until he speaks her name. Mary. And he just said it so everly, gently. Mary. She knew that voice. Mary knew that voice. And at that moment for Mary, she faced a brand new reality. She knew the truth. And at this very instant, that truth she had discovered is setting her free. In the moment, it is changing her. It is Jesus she stands before. It is the Son of Man. His body has not been stolen. Jesus has done exactly what he said he would do. He has risen. He has conquered death. Amen and hallelujah. He has defeated evil. So we say praise you Jesus. At this very moment it becomes aware that God has breathed the breath of life back into Jesus. And he is alive again. And here's the thing. And we can bounce into this situation right now. With this discovery, Mary, right then, she came alive too. And I wonder, have you encountered him and have you come alive just as Mary did on that Easter Sunday morning? We could say to a certain degree, this was Mary's resurrection moment too. Her whole being was lifted, her whole countenance changed but because she encountered the living God. Now there's no more tears. Now she said, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord and he is alive. I have seen the Lord and he is risen. Amen and hallelujah. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You see, on that first Easter Sunday morning, I say again, everything changed. Not just for Mary, but for each of us, life for as we know it would never ever be the same again. This totally transforming and big eye opening moment came to her when the risen Lord called Mary by name and she turned towards him. She turned towards Jesus. And I wonder, for Mary, 
in those few moments of loss and despair and disappointment and maybe even the feelings of being confused, the feeling of what now he is no longer here, he is dead, what did that mean for Mary? Because this was her crisis moment in life. And many of us may be feeling a little bit of that crisis moment in our own lives right now. Not just referring to the world events that are unfolding before us, but the many other day-to-day situations and issues of life that are still, for some of us, maybe creating fear and creating anxiety and doubt. But listen, just like when Jesus whispered her name and in an instant all was changed, he was saying, hey Mary, yes, I may have to ascend to my father, but Mary, Mary, I'm here now, I'm here now, and in this moment, dear ones, for those looking in today, Jesus is saying to you and I, believers, lo, I am with you today, do not fear. I am with you until the very end of time. And because of this, do we not have this incredible blessed assurance that our fears are settled, our doubts are erased, our concerns are calmed in the fact and the knowledge that Jesus is with us and in every storm of life, he stays with us and brings us through that we can see light at the end of the tunnel. And maybe right now the risen Saviour, the risen Lord is still speaking, speaking. And if you will stop doing what you're doing for a minute and pause, maybe listen really carefully, perhaps you'll hear his voice. Listen. For some he may be calling your name, he's definitely calling my name. Can we hear the voice of the Lord today? Can we stop and hear his voice? Because I believe he is calling us by name and telling us that he has conquered death. That he did all of this because of his great love for us. And that right now he wants to share his life with each one of us personally. This for you and I. This is the great news of Easter. This is the good news of Jesus great victory. The good news of Easter is the four letter word life. It is life and it is life to the full. And the great thing here for you and I is this. Jesus wants to share with each one of us new life in Christ. What does that look like? It's called the abundant life. It's called the redeemed life. It's the re-energized life. It is the spirit-filled life. It is the resurrected and eternal life. You see, hear what I'm saying today. The purpose of life will never be death. It is not. The purpose of life is life with Jesus. Yes, it is. A life that triumphs completely over death so we state again and we can shout it all day and it could ring through the churches and ring through our homes today Jesus is risen from the dead but we must wake up to the power the risen Lord is bringing into our lives Jesus is risen from the dead and for some of us we must wake up and open to the power of scripture that speak over our life today Today. Because as Jesus, hear this, as Jesus called Mary's name to stir her soul to consciousness, to come alive, so Jesus sends a personal wake up call to every single one of us today. Wake up and stop looking at the issues. Wake up and stop looking at the circumstances. Begin to look to the hills from where your salvation has come. Stop looking at the problems we are confronted with on a day-to-day basis. Here's what we need to do when we stop this. We need to turn our eyes upon Jesus. We need to look full in his wonderful face. And you know what will happen? The things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Church, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Those who believe in me, even though they die and live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never ever die. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and we have resurrected life today in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, praise God, and amen. Church, because of Easter, we not only receive a message of great hope, but for some of us today, in the world we're living in, he has called you and I to be a people of hope, a people who carry this news. Because if you go on to look at this story, Jesus sent Mary out to the world with this message, this gospel message of good news. He says, do not hold on to me. Go instead. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm returning to my father and your father, to my God and to your God. And I think there's a message here, and it may be like a word of knowledge for some today. So wake up and listen to this. I believe Jesus is saying, regardless of what's going on in our world, we can still be effective and we can still make a difference. Just like Mary did on Easter Sunday morning, she could have stood there before Jesus. Jesus. She could have doubted, been confused, she could have wondered, fear could have overwhelmed us and she could have ran for the hills. She still had a choice to make and that was to carry the good news. That was to take the good news. What was the good news? It's still the same for you and I today. Mary, go and tell them I'm still here. Tell them I'm still here. Tell the world that hope, hallelujah, is still alive. That love is still in the world and it is still alive. That God is still alive. Remind them, Mary, that God is still in charge. That God will triumph. He will win. That Jesus is always with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. That God loves us eternally and forevermore. Then, that, that's when where we are now. You see, sometimes in the story, in our story, when we feel sad, and when we feel blue, and we wonder what tomorrow holds for us, and we've all been in these places, we're down and out. It's mostly when we're down and out that Jesus shows up, and Jesus is coming looking for you, and he's chapping on your heart's door today. Just like he did with Mary on that Easter Sunday morning. He came to Mary, he waited for Mary, he knew Mary was coming, and then he spoke her name. He called her name. And she was touched and he ch changed by that. He's calling your name today. You see, see church, still today, Jesus has the power to resurrect. And Jesus has the power to resurrect us from all those things that are dead and dormant in our life, his voice spoken over our life, calling our name out, that power transcends and that power transforms and that power changes us. So hear this today, Jesus has the power to turn your sorrow into joy, your mourning into dancing, turn tears of grief into tears of gratitude, but also turn our deadness into life. To come alive in the things of God. The same risen Jesus I believe and here's a word for us today. Is still sending you and I with this amazing good news. But I believe he's using the word run. Run with this good news into the world. When I say the word run what comes with that is passion. Vigoration, excitement, joy, carry it as a joy carrier, carry it with real life and energy that when people would see the hope of glory flowing out of your life because the same risen Jesus is sending you and I today with this awesome news. You see we're living today are we not? We're living today in troublesome times, in, the, in these most perilous of times that there's fear and there's doubt in these most worrying and untesting of times. You know, many, many were even concerned that the church was somehow going to miss out on Easter. What, but what are we today actually being fearfully and wonderfully being taught by the Master? I believe we're being taught this. 
The church is not a steeple. The church is not some building. And we love the church in that sense. But I believe what he's saying. And he's saying on Resurrection Sunday. And he's asking you and I to come alive to this. He's saying you are the church. Be the church. Do the church. Live the church. And present the church as it is meant to be. I am the church. And I thank God for Mosville Community Church. That still today we are doing church today. You see, how can we do that? Well, we do that because the risen Christ is with us. The risen, the risen Christ is with us. And he is always and continually in our midst. His presence is always with us with us. How do I know? How do I know today? How do I know the risen Christ is in our midst? Let me tell you how I know. Because I am here alone. And I'm standing here alone preaching an Easter sermon. And I'm standing here today in a building that is empty. But I'm preaching all my heart and all my soul with all my passion for the audience of one, for the King of Kings, for the Lord of Lords, for the King of Glory, for the Great I Am, for the Alpha, the Omega, for the beginning and the end. I am preaching and giving him 100% all that I can because he is worthy, because he laid down his life for me. He gave up everything for me. And you know, when I came in here today, I thought I would feel alone. I thought I'd feel alone because my family and friends are not here with me. But I want you to know, I'm not alone. His presence in this room, in this hall, is as great as it's ever been. And although, like many of you, I have not seen angels in the balcony, I am conscious today, oh my goodness, I am so conscious of the presence of God and the presence of others in the room with us. And I feel it's just like Mary going to the tomb on that Easter Sunday morning. His voice reassured her that she was not alone, but that she would never ever be alone because of the resurrection she would be constantly in the presence of God and I wonder are you hearing his voice today have you heard, heard his voice today have you heard, felt Jesus up close and personal have you known his intimate presence recently listen we are his church be his church we are the living and breathing church being sovereignly led by the Holy Spirit led by his spirit into all truth you see when it comes back and we move on from the Easter story we quite quickly jump into what's known as the Great Commission where we're told go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit so still and regardless of what's going on and how bad things seem to be and they may get worse it will never change the dynamic that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the great I am and the healer. It will never change the course of history when it comes to world events centered around the Son of God. So scripture says, and we find that we've been given a task and that is this. So open your heart to this today and ask God, what do you want me to do? Acts 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit does what? Comes upon you, comes upon you, comes upon you. Let the Holy Spirit in your home come upon you. Don't worry who's sitting next to you. Forget your kids for two minutes. Just open your hands, open the palms of your hands and receive the touch of God today. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come. Let the anointing of God saturate you. Listen, buy into this. It's not made up. It's not a myth. The resurrection, the power of God, the touch of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit are all real right now. And again, I say that because I'm in a room right now and I've been saturated and intoxicated by the presence of God. So let go and trust God and believe that He's going to move in your life sovereignly, sovereignly, supernaturally as you yield to Him. But it comes through yielding and 
and surrendering all to him. So that when Jesus says from this moment, this is what I want you to do. It's not let me think about that, Lord. It's yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. That's the task. Go into all the world. And in all of this, in all of this that's going on, Easter Sunday, God gives the church power. Say power. God gives the church power for living power for loving and doing the ministry of Jesus Christ. Hear me, hear my heart today. We are the church. We are the church who take all that Christ has given us and puts it into practice under the anointing of God. We are today, believe this, believe this, we are the resurrected people of God called to do not just ministry, it's called resurrection ministry. That's when you speak with the power of God, you speak to dead bones or dead people because of the glory and authority and power of God in you. That life instantaneously catches what you have and you begin to see someone who's been lost and lonely and isolated and far removed from the things of God, draw near to God, catch the vision of Jesus and begin to move into the things of God. But we have to carry the gospel with joy in our hearts under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we are the resurrected people of God running. Now we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running from that encounter with Jesus because we've met him, we're buzzing we're excited, we're full of energy, we're running with the risen Christ in our hearts and I wonder, have you had such an encounter recently? Because if you have not, you need to get on your knees this morning and you need to cry out for the touch of God and say God touch me, I'm in a dry I'm in a lonely place and I need your presence, I don't want to live this way feeling empty feeling useless, feeling stuck feeling a bit nothing to offer because God is speaking to someone today by the power of the Holy Ghost and he's saying to you, you are valuable to me, you are useful to me but he's also saying change your ways, turn your eyes on Jesus, look not to the things of this world, look not to the man-made things, crave not what the world offers you but turn to the things of God on this Easter Sunday morning and he will resurrect you in that encounter moment and cause you to come alive to the things of God so just praise him and praise him and praise him for his goodness in your life and as we lift out Jesus in these times that we are living in and as we have encountered him at the tomb as we encountered him at the cross we need to be that authentic expression of joy and life and liberty and hope that we're called to be being people that will impact others with the greatness of of Jesus with the hope of God glory bursting right out of our lives. Paul's words come through to us with timely encouragement and we're closing up with this and it's an important scripture we must say on Easter Sunday. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Praise him. Hallelujah. Where, oh death, is your victory? Where, oh death, is your sting? But thanks, hallelujah, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Church, rejoice and be glad for he is with you. He has not left you alone. You're not in an isolated place. I love what 1 Corinthians 15 and 55 says, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast. This is for the church. Immovable. Always excelling in the work of the Lord. Because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This could be the first day of your life in that sense. This could be the first day of your life as a resurrected individual. But for those of you who have come alive to God, share the good news, share the gospel, run with it. Talk about Jesus wherever you go and whatever you do. And I pray for you today that the church of Jesus Christ and for every single person who's looking in today, that they'd be filled with the Holy Spirit and keep the resurrection keep Easter strong today and tomorrow so it's not just once a year people get excited about this but resurrection day for you and I is every day because he's changed us touched us and we've come alive to the things of God like never before so Father in the name of Jesus 
Bless your people, touch your church, create in us a clean heart. May we be open to all that God has for us. May we not settle for being average or second class citizens, Lord. You've raised us up to be salt and light and make a difference in this world. I pray, Lord God, for those who need a fresh touch from heaven. Would you visit with them today? Would the Holy Spirit of God come upon them? Would they sense the blessing of the Holy Spirit in their homes? Would they begin to sense newness of life rising up within them? And would they seek your kingdom first and all these other things they desire would be added unto them we thank you God that you're alive and that you're well and you're on the throne we commit ourselves to you we yield our members to you and we surrender our lives to you may the blessing of God fill our homes and our lives and our hearts today in Jesus name Amen, be blessed Hallelujah Thank you.